been this thing, man. Y'all know how we get down. When I'm in Virginia, I'm always messing with Miss Hollywood 313 and Session 420. You know what I'm saying? It's going down every time I'm in Virginia. Y'all need to follow my people. Miss Hollywood 313 and Session 420. Pata. Is it me or was it hot in here? Yeah. Is it me or was it hot in here? So Everybody, it's your girl Marquita, but they like to call me Who Miss Hollywood. That's loud. Don't nobody go in the bathroom <laughs> for about three to five, forty-five minutes. My bad, y'all. Open the window. <laughs> Open the window. Open the window. They like to call me Miss Hollywood. Uh, you're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood the Podcast. <laughs> Uh, so Hollywood Podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally and I bring them together with this thing called entertainment. Uh, I like to do a recap, which is my last episode. I had Snacks. He is a Canada resident, Rochester native, and he is a rapper. He's a dope, conscious rapper. Uh, make sure you guys tune in to the latest episode of So Hollywood Podcast on all of your streaming platforms, as well as here on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and I'm now on Twitter. Shout out to me. Uh, follow him. I am snacks with a z on instagram if you want to be a guest go to www.allofhollywood.biz and without further ado i would like to bring my special guest in the building today session 420 um I, he goes by the name of big peso he is a rapper entertainer overall good dude he is a p-town representer and we're gonna bring him up on the stage today how you doing today <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Nope, you can't hear yourself because I can't hear you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, <laughs> today has just been one of those days for me, and it's just, you know, you know, when everything good is happening, a lot of things bad come behind it, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm blessed, and, and I'm about to be 38 in, on Sunday, so... Yeah, happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy early birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the gift. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so let's get this um, interview started. Um, how did this thing called entertainment enter your life? <coughs> well. The gas. <laughs> yeah, it's the gas. <laughs> well, um, I started um, recording early, um, probably like, you know, about. 12, 13, I used to record myself. Me and my friends used to um, record each other. Mm -hmm. And I never really thought I would take it serious. Then I was just doing it. And, um, uh, you know, it just led me here. And you're originally from Portsmouth, correct? Yeah. Well, how do you say it officially? Because a lot of people, a lot of out-of-towners don't know how to say it, and some people on the, on the inside of the seven cities don't know how to say it. So how do you properly say I don't even want to say it. Go ahead yeah, and say it. It's Portsmouth. Yeah. <laughs> Portsmouth. Sound like you're saying it with an F instead of a TH. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Not Portsmouth. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> People get it misconstrued, but it's all good. Um, so what was it like or what was the entertainment scene growing up in Portsmouth? I mean, we had we had good entertainment. Really, we had good we had the best rappers. Like, I mean, we had great rappers. I grew up listening to um People in my neighborhood, they was like beefing with each other, but not as far as like how they taking it to this thing now, like with guns. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just rap, and it was like you know I was listening to YWS, um, 
um, his name is Young Tay, got them, but um, and then him and Young X was going at it. I was listening to both of them. Both of them was going crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. That's what the city needed. Even Breeze Barker, um, back then, he had his own little wave um, with, with T.O.P. They had T.O.P. back then. That, that's what I was listening to. And what, around what year was that? Because I moved here in 01. So um, was that before or after 01? That was after 01. After 01, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I wasn't really in, into the, I was into the entertainment scene, but not as heavy as I am now. So those names, they don't sound familiar, so please forgive me. Um, but yes, we're going we gonna to get that together because they're going to, are they are still doing their thing or what's happening? No, they still, they still doing their thing. Uh, you know, X, he be on, um, he a battle rapper, he be on Smack. Um, really? Yeah. You know, X be on Smack. Breeze Barker, he doing his own thing. You know, he got, like, he was on one of Timbaland albums. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, like, they still doing their thing. Like, everybody's still doing their thing. Like, I'm proud of everybody. And they from my city. They from Portsmouth. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud right. of that. Yeah. And nobody would have never known because, you know, not a lot of people really talk about Virginia anymore. I mean, when the Chris Browns came out and, you know, when the, yeah. you know, right. when those people came out, you, they here. talked about it. But it's a lot of talent here. In Definitely. the Virginia, not Virginia Beach, in the Virginia area, because you hear it in songs, you've heard it, um, on you know through throughout the years, and so I think we we haven't gotten the the proper due due diligence that we need to get. Um, and speaking of that, um, how was your support system growing up and wanting to transition over to um this thing called entertainment? Uh, well, my support system was right like, horrible. Really? Like when it came to that, because I mean, only people that really wanted me to do it was like the, my closest friends. Mm-hmm. Like, they're the only people who really knew. They like, bro, hey, you need to go ahead and go ahead. I mean, let's do let's do it. Like everybody, all of us used to rap, but I'm the only one that took it serious out of all my friends. Nobody did it but me. Wow. So I don't know. I just felt like I I I I, I looked to it more for venting than than they did. Like they just did it like to have fun, but I was like venting. Like, because most of the people that I do interview, they either have a uh, a church background or either a um, a musical background and or uh, poetry. Now, okay. was that any po- was that in any part of your, your definitely definitely church? What? Yeah, I was in a choir. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was in a choir. My, my, I would have uh, never. I was nine years old in the choir. My mom would make sure. But that's when I started going to church. My sister, actually, my sister was 10, and she got my whole family to go to church. She what? Was, she was 10 years old, and she got, I was nine. I knew nothing about a church when I was nine years old. Right. My, my sister that was 10 years old, she went with her friends one time and their parents, and she came home and was like, I want all y'all to come with me to church. And we all went with her to church, and my mom had been a Christian ever since. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So... Shout out to your sister. Yeah, my sister, the goat for that. That's why, like, I feel like I'm protected from a lot. Like, a lot of people be like, how you make it this far? Like, I'm I'm, I'm 30 years old, and I ain't got no charges. Like, but, but, like, I, I, like, Eric, I, I, I ain't got to say nothing I done. The whole, right, right, the right, whole right, right. city of Portsmouth can tell you right. that I've done a lot, and I've been through a lot. But I, I got here, you know what I'm saying, by the grace of God. Ain't mm. nothing else. Can't nobody tell me nothing. That's crazy, cause that's also important too. Because um, I try to instill in the artists or the people that come come here or come on the show is like you have to have some type of foundation, whether it be spiritual, uh, you know, or or you gotta, or, you gotta or believe something. in something, right, right, because it's gonna it's getting you somewhere. Like it it is it's not in vain. It doesn't go in vain. So you know how how important is that for you cuz you said you 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 know you grew up well, not grew up but you went to church and you you know you you made a way through the hard times so how important is that to believe in something i mean it's it's like almost mandatory cuz it's it's like that's what got me through a lot of my friends go through a lot we all went through, i got all them in church when I went to church, I brought all my friends to church. We was like, we had fun in church. Because, I mean, you know, we weren't perfect. We like, might have cussed in church and, <laughs> right. you know I mean, did all these little, felt little girls in church. Right. That's what we did. But, like, we was kids. So, right. so, but I understood church, though. So, you know I mean, that's why I went. And when I got older, like a teenager, like, I just, I, I fell out of love for really going. So I stopped going, but it's still in me. Mm. So, you know what I mean? It's still in me. Mm-hmm. I, got, I got Bible verses that I, that's what that's what I pray. I pray every time before I eat. Pray three times a day. 
Wow. Because I don't, you know, I don't want to go off of appearance, but just by looking at you, you you know, most people from the outside looking in don't look like they, they what they've been through or what they're going through. And that's so that's fact. that's dope that you are continuing to, to, to push forward with, you know, with a higher power, because not everybody that's believes right. in you know certain things, so I'm not gonna get into that, because that's all, all political. I ain't I ain't about that life right now. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I ain't, they, they can throw all them kind of questions. I ain't even answering. Yeah, them. like no, no, no. God know my heart. We Facts. talk to each other every night. Facts. I know. You better talk about it. <laughs> you better talk about it. So, um, with also <laughs> that being said, did you participate in any like activities? Like, were you in the band? Were you, um. Uh, I was a star football player. What? Yeah, star. And through through middle school, high school, or just high school? I only I I I ain't get past the ninth grade, but oh. in ninth grade I played JV and varsity, but I was I was the strongest person in my whole school. Wow. Yeah. So would that be what you would be doing if you weren't yeah. rapping? Definitely, I miss football. Like that's why I coach. I coach. I mean the kids. So they should come out with like a a a, a team for like. People that are like in the hip hop game or in the entertainment industry just oh, yeah. that, that want to do like Ice Cube's done, you know. Yeah. He's gotten like artists and people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that, that yeah. I think that should I think that should be, be accessible for artists too. Like if you weren't doing this, where would you be now? Type thing. We gotta make sure we get that started. Yes, <laughs> yes. You heard it here first. Don't steal my idea, got in it. Don't steal my motherfucking idea, cause I listen. I will press yeah. charges. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is recorded. <laughs> so, um, when did you realize rapping was going to be the pivotal, pivotal moment? You know how you try to say big words, but you can't really say it. Um, when did you realize rapping was going to be the end all be all for you? I mean, it was like a cut, like like a couple of years ago, probably like a year ago. Really? Yeah, it took a while for me to really. I was doing it just to do it, like just to be doing it and just to drop videos just to be like yeah I'm, I'm better than him i can rap better than him but <laughs> it now, was a competition for it's you. like it's like when when i started my fan base started really growing and people starting to like and when i go perform and every person that came down like i perform at uh, industry showcases and every industry showcase everyone i performed at it, everybody that performed was like they didn't even see them they seen me it was like bro you a star every time i got on stage like you the one like you the one, like it's no. And what did else. what did they see in you, or what did you see in yourself to feel that way? I mean, I ain't, I ain't really see I, I, before before um, platinum producer um, Nash B he seen me, and he said he said, "Boy, like he be like, how old are you?" I got on stage, told him how old I was. He be like, "Man, look, man, you ready? Are you ready right now? He was like, I don't know why. He was like, I don't, like, what you doing? Like, is, is you putting money behind your music? He couldn't even believe that I won't own yet. Right. He like, like, bro, you hard. Like, and then it, it's more in my performance of like when you see me perform versus when you hear my music. Like, you might hear my music, okay, you hear you like, okay, that's a good song. But then when you see me perform that song, mm -hmm. it's a whole nother ball game. It's like I turn to somebody different when I perform. Do people often like compare you to like Deuce Deuce or like my homeboys? Yeah, they they Stu say money. You know, they what I mean? say yeah, Stu Money, my dog. Uh, free Stu Money, by the way. He out. He out. Yeah. He out. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Stu Money free. Yep. Hey, so 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 um, <laughs> nah, P. People um compare me to um like I'd have heard all type of stuff like Big Yavo and and um uh just by performance or by overall or how what because it's a different breakdown. I mean, cause cause I, I got so many different styles. Like I could man, listen, I could just swag a song out. I could auto tune a song. I can make a freestyle. You can everybody. adapt. Yeah, I could just it's... adapt to everything. Like so. Wow. I've been doing this shit for a minute, like, and now I just listen to everybody. It ain't like I'm biting somebody, but it's like, I just need to hear the sound. Like, what's the sound? What, you take like, bits and pieces yeah, like, as you, you should. Yeah, you gotta take bits and pieces from everything. Yeah, as you should, because a lot of people, they don't want to do that. They want to take the whole pie, try to eat the whole pie, then got no, full. You and you know what I mean? You can't do that. You gotta take bits and pieces of, of what you of see and like, make it work for you because everything is not gonna work for everybody. It's yeah. just not gonna work that way. Like, yeah. I don't understand why people 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 feel that way, or you know what I mean. But yeah. anyway, do you do you really? I know you said you like 
more of the freestyle, but do you do written work or like how is your process of being a rapper? Like what is your process of being? A rapper? All right, so ain't nothing written. All right, so as soon as I my my homeboy um Ski, he all on my mixtape, P C D Ski. As soon as he sent me the beats, like I just start recording. I mean, I start uh listening to it, and like the first thing I try to do is just come off. I'm like, all right. When I come off, it got to be the hardest shit, so people could be like, "Yo, this this song is hard." As soon as it come off, so I sit in myself. I just keep thinking, like, like in my head, you know. And then it come up. It just come out of nowhere, and I just keep going, like, and I don't. I punch in, you know. That's it. And there's nothing wrong with punching in for those that are out there listening and watching. There's nothing yeah. wrong with somebody that punches in because that just knows what you want to do. When I used to write. Man, I got plenty of shit when I used to write. I could just spit some bars for you, but mm-hmm. it, like, it just it won't get me nowhere. I, I wasn't motivating myself with that music. I was the whole point of me rapping is to motivate myself to make me feel good. Like, I won't feel in that music. Like, I just won't feel in it. Like, it was okay. It sounded good, but man, the freestyle is just like when you hear the song after you done. It's like damn, I just made that, and I ain't had nothing in my head. Like. That's that's the feeling that you get, and everybody like vibe to like, yo, this shit the one, like, and this shit was freestyle, all freestyle. Mm. So, where do you get your motivation from? Is it mostly like your family or friends or music or like what is what is your motivation? Uh, I mean, my motivation is of course my kids, but it's like when you hear, I, I did like recently like five industry showcases, like I said. First person, when he tell you you the one out of all these people that perform, and I know these people was good that perform. Right. <laughs> when he tell you you the one, it's like okay, all right, that's one person to say that. It's kind of motivating, but you know what I'm saying. It's just right. one person. He a platinum right. producer, but then when M16 come, he a platinum producer. He said, "Hey, hey, big peso." Now, big. where was this showcase? Tell us, tell us, oh, give us a little was bit a, of uh, background of the showcase itself. Um, my um. One of my homies, the Ghetto Ghost. He shout be, out to shout out my boy Ghetto Ghost, man. He was you on here know. too. Yeah, that's my dog. Yeah. So uh, he be having showcases um, okay. with industry heads. Yep. So just trying to get people looked at, get people uh, in better positions. Right. So um, he brought Nat Platinum producer Nasby down here with Chino Capping, yep. one of his artists, and uh, I won that showcase. Um, then he brought M16 down here. With um Mike Rooney, yeah. Um, they told me I was the hottest at that showcase. So uh, he brought Chris Gotti down here. Um, Did you go to the Bimmy one when Bimmy Anthony was there? I, I, I it's, that's the only one I missed. But Bimmy still seen me because I performed at at the uh, after party. So Bimmy was fucking with me. Mm-hmm. We we just went to Bimmy uh we just went to Deb House recently in Atlanta for Bimmy's birthday. Me Ghost and one um. New Master. That's who um Bimmy was fucking with when um bit when when uh when Bimmy was down here. Right, 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 right. So right. um shout out my dog New Master too. We got a tape coming, a collab tape. So uh it's like we working, um uh not Bimmy, uh M sixteen when Mike Rooney was down here, they said I was they couldn't believe this shit. So and he brought Chris Gotti down here. Chris Gotti was shocked. He was like at the end of the showcase, all he kept saying was my name. He was like, yo. Hey, peso. Like, you the one. Right. Like, I'm, so this every person that's coming down here, it's not like ghost telling him to say this shit. Right, and right, right, right. It was it's, confirmation. It's, it's, for it's you. confirmation. It's like he's like these niggas is saying, like, hey, peso, like you the one. I'm like, damn, like, this shit just made me want to go even harder. So now I'm just foot on neck. I ain't going nowhere. I'm standing right here. I'm all to the races. Wow. Shout out to all those guys because they are really, really dope. And even for That's coming down here, because we need to bring that back here because um, we we used to have that. We used to have the executives come through here and we could do stuff like that. And um, speaking of that, do you think that we have a hub or a major hub or some type of something that could could push us forward as a whole? Uh, I, I definitely think we do, but. Um... It's gonna take the unity. It just take people to get together and just, you know, put all the pride to the side, like, cause I know people right now that do, you know, like a lot for the for 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 music, like, 
Uh, shout out Capri. Capri, she 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 do a lot. I mean, goes do a lot. It's like, boy, if we put all this shit together, we got people like that bring people down here, like Creative Nation. They bringing music artists down here sure. and, and letting people perform. You know, open up and shit. So it's a lot of people doing shit. It is if we bring all that shit together, there's no way we can lose. There's no way. So what do you think that we're lacking? Like, what is the Unity. It's like yes. just connecting into together and actually using each other's resources. Like I can use your resources, you use mine. It's just like yeah. some people be like without without well, expecting like, something in return. Yeah, it's like if I if I try to use your resources, you'd be like, hold on, I can't let you get my resources. Like it's a plug. I can't let you get to the plug. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. That's just what they're doing. Mm. Is there anything that you think other than other than that that will connect us? Just like in Atlanta, or just like a, a, a LA or a, or a New York. Like, what is that? <laughs> Other than that, is there one like main thing <laughs> outside of that? <coughs> oh, the gas. Hot That's when you hit that shit. <laughs> Dab on them. <laughs> yeah. <Damn>. That way. <laughs> 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 okay, now back to our regularly scheduled program. So, <laughs> so in the midst of um, being an artist and being a rapper, um, what else kind of influenced you and what else kind of pushed you forward to really pursue your artistry or this thing called entertainment? Uh, I mean, it's just the fact that, like, I, I'm, from, I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm one of the realest niggas in my city. And I ain't got to say that shit. It just goes to be said, I'm this age. I made it here. I, I help people out. I help a lot of people out. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, in my city, I do a lot for kids. Like, like, I'm a part of a lot of shit. So, it's like, for niggas not to listen to my shit, and my shit only get a little bit of views. Like, when I was first doing this shit, when I was like 23 and 22, and niggas ain't really listening, like, I was really out here. I actually did this shit. Like, how y'all not going to respect this shit? Like, it just felt like niggas was jealous or something, so. But I couldn't blame it on them. I'm just like, boy, I'm, it's going to make me go hard. My nigga New Mess kept telling me, like, nigga, you just got to go harder. Go harder, bro. What the fuck? Like, yeah. Just keep going hard, bro. Just, like, it, like, it was just simple. Like, you just saying, like, nigga, go harder. That's it. I'm like, all right. Shit, and that's what I've been doing. Because mm, if you don't, otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to tear you down. It's going right, to put you back tell you into down. that it, momentum. Because you worry like, about what the next man doing. This, I just can't worry about what the next person doing. I don't care what he rapping about, what he dropping. I got to drop at my pace, my time, how I, I'm doing me. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that's what I'm focused on. Right. I'm not worried about nobody else, just me. You got the blinders on. Yeah. Just like I got the, I'm the same way right now. Because I was focused... I personally was focused on a lot of other thing and a lot of other people because I knew I could do for a lot of other people. And then I wasn't in return doing the same exact mm -hmm. thing for myself. And so when I started to do that, it, it it literally just turned me around 360. It was like, you in the mirror now, like you, you, you got, you got shit to do. And so that's all I really am seeing. And, and ever since then, it's just been great. It's been, you know, I'm getting more and more, things accomplished and and I just want every I just want that for everybody in this area too cuz I'm going hard for Virginia. I'm not even from Virginia. I'm originally from Detroit and okay. I moved here. My family is from here, but when I seen it and I saw that there is a, a melting pot and there was talent here, I, there was nothing else for me to do but pursue this thing called entertainment. And what that's, part of Detroit are you from? Uh the West Side. I'm I was just born there. I ain't even going to hold you. Uh, I was just born there. I was raised in Tennessee, so yeah, I got yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of all of the above. Yeah. But um what is like what is your recording process? Like when you go into the studio, how what is the vibe? And like tell us walk us through the day in the life of, of Big Peso. Today, Man. to this day. To this day, like when I used to go in the studio, well um I, I used to call my nigga Clint. I still do sometimes, but um he made my beats and he on my um tape, my new tape too. Clint Presidential. Shout out to him. So um, I used to go to his crib. Everybody used to, that's, that was the move. Like after school or some shit like that, everybody had Clint crib. Clint, the only nigga know how to make beats. He got microphone in his crib, all that shit. He got cool. everything you need Man, right there. He a feed, his mama feed everybody. Like 
So we used to go over there, record. So I mean that, that that's why I started it. Like them niggas heard me, they was like, "Yo, you hard." Come on. Like, we, they just brought me in. My nigga Rome brought me in. Rome introduced me to Clint, but he didn't even know I knew Clint already. So That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how things are coming, like, in yeah. full circle and, and connecting together. Because me yeah. and my fiance, we were just talking about this. Like, we people know each other but don't know each other in all aspects. But it's coming full circle, and that's just crazy. And also, with that being said, you said you had your people around you, like, how was that, and and how do you feel about having people around you and and putting them to work or giving them a position and and you know so on and so forth? Like how is that, how important to you, or how important is that to you? Oh uh, shit, that's important. But um, shit, right now, like I'm just on me. But at first, like I, even though my I dropped a tape called Big Peso, my um, it's on all platforms. I got um. And my producer Clint, he dropped the tape too. Called uh, "Go Up and Never Stop One" and "Go Up and Never Stop 2. I got um, one of my artists that I had up there. His name was OG Youngboy. Um, he was like 15. He was hard. I said, "Boy, I got to have you on my tape." Like he just was singing and shit. He just had a voice and shit. That nigga was hard. So I had to like fuck with him. And like. That was the first time I really started fucking with, like, actually, like, trying to put somebody on type shit. You know what I'm saying? But now, like, I mean, I ain't really in no position to put nobody nowhere. So, like, but if I can help a young artist, like, that's, that I see grinding and he dropping videos and he on doing. way. If he on the way. Yeah. And if I can help him anyway, like, doing a feature or put him in any position, like, put him on with y'all or somebody like that, I, I, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, just putting somebody under my wing, I just ain't ready to do that yet. Right. Understood. Understood. Because yeah. you focus, you focus on yourself pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And where you got That's to go. It. So where kids. do you, where do you feel like you're gonna be in like the next like six months? Six months. Yeah. I mean, or even at the top of the year, because I know you have um, some things in the works brewing up. Um, because you have something dropping at the top of the year, right? Yeah, man. I got some crazy shit. I got a tape. I'm I'm about to drop my tape, Peso Belafonte. Yeah. And um, I'm about to drop a collab tape with my dog, New Mount, so we dropping that top of the year. Um, that's going to be crazy because bro buzzing right now. I'm buzzing right now. It's like everybody at the top of their game. So we just own that right now. Everybody focus. You know what I'm saying? So. As, long as, as long as they're a part of the train and not like a, a part of the, the fixing process, yeah. as, if that makes sense. Then they can hop on, cause if they not if they not doing something or like upgrading themselves as I'm upgraded, then yeah, it's, at this point there's no need to continue doing doing stuff. That's a fact. But um, let's see, what do you feel your contribution is to this thing called entertainment, or what do you feel your contribution will be to this thing? Man. Uh, I I think like uh, well I think my my contribution will be will be like will be crazy like I just know when I get in the game it's gonna be crazy man I'm gonna bring people who just like me they're just gonna be like bro like I can do it like cause he did it you know what yeah. I'm saying I ain't perfect I'm far from perfect man like I've been through a lot I've been through a lot like I don't know I, I can't say I deserve it or that I don't I just know I'm grinding hard to get what I want. Thanks. Right. And what is some advice that you could leave to the culture or this thing called entertainment? Man, just stay focused. Stay focused. Don't worry about nobody else. Stay on top of your game. Like, don't never let nobody tell you can't do it. Because, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I really believe you can do it. Like, I done did a lot in music. Like, as far as this year, like, the previous years before this year, I ain't do, I ain't do features with nobody. Like, now... I got features with plenty of people like it's booming now. Like so it's like they seeing it. They seeing the work. They seeing they, they listen to the music. Like, man, bro hard. Like And they dropping them. Cause sometimes they, they give you a feature and they don't drop the song. Now they on my tape. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. oh, my bad. Yeah, no, nah, that not that. Bad. Yeah. Nah, they on my tape. My like, bad. <laughs> <laughs> they on my tape. Like I, if I have a session, mm -hmm. they might be in a session before me. 
And as soon as I get in, they'll be like, bro, hey, oh, I already know. As soon as they see me walking in the studio, they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we about to go, we about to go crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because they know I got the beats ready. I ain't playing, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. Like I told you, I go in the studio and just be ready to record. Wow. Shout out, shout out so Hollywood. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, I like to do this thing called top five, which is five questions or either. It just depends on how I feel. Um, but mainly five questions, five questions and five answers catered to my guests. Um, so, yeah, let's go. Top five features you would like. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Top five features I would like. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But then I get 20 seconds. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Nah, uh, I say my first one, I had to be nice. Um, I write for that because I had to get in my bag. Um, my second one would have to be, I had to do a feature with uh Wayne. Um, my third one, I had to do a feature with, who was going to do it? Uh, give me Gucci. I got to get one with Gucci, just because, um, Nip. She called you Nip. One more. Um, man, fuck it, free, free melody, man. Cause look, I be on my singing shit too, so. <laughs> you know, that's what the crazy shit. I oh, know that's shit. right. You better. Free to, free you better. Hurt, <laughs> hot and hot. <laughs> better. <laughs> so hot okay, and hot. so top five producers you'd like to work with. Mm. This is all manifestation, so yeah. this is what I, I also like to call the manifestation yeah. hour. I got plenty of producers. Uh, uh, I had to work with. Um, just Blaze, um, Zaytoven, um, mm, it's kind of hard. I I had to for real. <coughs> Kanye, um, uh, let me land on the track. Hey, no local, no local producers. I said for real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what about Kino, Kino Beats or like Lex Luger? Any of the, any of those? Uh, Raja. Kino, I rather I, I get a beat from Kino. Okay. Yeah, That's Kino. Extra. I used to record with Kino. Like Kino was Kino was the shit back then. So I, I definitely get a beat from Kino. Okay. Top five artists in your city or that has come out of your city? Uh, top five artists in my city. Boy, that's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, I got to say Young X. Mm-hmm. Um, Queasy Reed. Um, Lou Manson. Um, Damn, this shit kind of hard. <laughs> I mean, if if you, if you can, if you, uh, man, I can't, I can't, I uh, can't, I can't not say CEO and BEO. I can't not say them. So I, you can put them as them one. Too, right. You can put them as one. That's one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now one more. Damn, man, this shit hard, boy. Um. Yeah, this last one's kind of hard. <laughs> This this is a, this excluded me. I ain't putting me in it, bro. Okay. Damn, Damn bro. Uh, I don't want to leave nobody out. This shit crazy. <laughs> That's fine. Up. That's fine. Uh, we can move on if you like. Yeah, uh, no. Nah, uh, who else, man? Um, my nigga Frank the Foster. I say him. Yeah, because he he won. He retired with it. Okay. Okay. Last question is this going this gonna mess you up? Top five moments in your career. Top five moments in my career. All of them was the showcases that I did. Recently? Recently. 
all of them right there. I'm telling you, that's what motivated me to keep going. Like, I was about to quit all this shit. I was about to say, fuck rapping. I got to pay my bills. I got to do what I got to do. But that shit kept me going. That shit had me. Them niggas like, yo, hey, boy, this nigga the hottest nigga out here. Like, I'm, I'm talking about the performances that other people doing before me is hard. Like, I'm, I'm not even sitting here lying to you. Like, they was hard. I'm saying, like, damn, this nigga just did a whole fucking, he had his shit put together. He had his shit worked out. Like, like how they wow. fuck they saying me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't know what they saying. Wow, that's a first. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, uh, well, let's push forward. It is wind down, which is coming to a close. So you can give your shout out, social media, last words, and I have one final question for you. Man, shout out my nigga Ghetto Ghost. Man, shout out my nigga Madu. Shout out. Uh, shout out Madu. Yeah. Shout out um my nigga New Master Autumn. Y'all already know what's going on. Mula, Ravine, all y'all niggas, man. I know what's going on. It's the team. GMF Peso, you know, shout out uh, So Hollywood, the podcast. Appreciate y'all for having me. Thank you. you know, I'll come back anytime. I'm about to turn y'all stage up. <laughs> uh oh, the green room. That's the new exclusive access. Y'all ain't seen this before. Y'all have never seen this before. We're going we gonna to give y'all some exclusivity, but not, not live. We're going to release it here right after our interview but anyways um last question is question of the day what bothered you about the industry and what would be your solution to fixing it? um the fact that one thing that bothers me about the industry is the fact that i don't, I don't believe in handouts but I, I believe that if if you if, i believe if everybody from every state that that's that's famous or whatever they got away if you can make a way for people you see like working hard, like why not do that? You know what I'm saying? Like I just said this because on my Instagram. If you, it, it'll be the, the the industry be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like it just like they just was, people get it and just be stingy. They be like fuck it, like just take this shit and just leave everybody. Like no, nah, it ain't even. But just put if you put somebody else on, you'll never fall off. They'll make sure you stay on. Like they just don't understand that shit. Like. But that's that, that's it for real. Like if everybody could just like, I ain't saying get no handouts. Like make somebody work for it, but like just put them in position. That's it. You if know what I'm saying? You see them working and already at that point, and that's yeah. all they need to check to check that box. That's all they need. Like give it to them. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I'm gonna do. I ain't even if I see somebody going crazy and I really feel like they talented. I'm I, I gotta. It, how can you not see money there? Like big facts. I don't know. And if they don't reach back, then that's just. I just don't know, man. Then when people make it later, they be like, "Damn, like, like I could have, I, I, I told shoulda, you." Coulda, shoulda, woulda, but didn't. Yeah. But it's these nuts. Yeah. That's what it that's is. That's a fact. But <laughs> is there um, anything else that you like to leave the people? Because we're gonna get up out of here and get you your performance ever. The first performance in So Hollywood, the podcast is in the green room. And I got. Uh, I sing about about to uh, be ready for pre-download, man. Y'all go get that DoorDash. It's gonna be everywhere. Oh shit! So you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it moving. You know, DoorDash, and then Peso Belafonte coming right behind that. So be ready for that. You know. Well. GMO shit, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of So Hollywood Podcast. Make sure you follow me, Miss Hollywood, and my SS Hollywood 313. Like, share, and subscribe to this video. Until next time, stay tuned because we will have a performance. Is it me or was it hiding here? Is it me or was it hiding here?